welcome to the server crowd this is our first video in the series and it's about the different product uh, family within server 2003 this video is going to cover the following information Microsoft Windows Server 2003 product families that's it first one that we're going to cover is web edition and it's designed for guess what web serving it allows for unlimited anonymous incoming web connections whereas the rest of them require uh, client access licenses for each uh, simultaneous connection but it only allows 10 inbound server message block SMB connections which is plenty as long as you're just using it for web, ser web, ser web serving and CMS supports up to, up to two gigabytes of RAM and two-way symmetric multiprocessing which basically is two processors um, it is not allowed to do DHCP fax or uh, routing gateway roles and it can be part of Active Directory but it can't be a do domain controller and there's also not an R2 version of Web Edition Standard Edition is the next step up and it can perform any of the following roles. It can be a domain controller, a file and print server, an application server, which is basically a IIS server with ASP.NET if you so choose to use it, uh, multimedia as in streaming and um, I suppose you could host it as well, and pop an SMTP mail and I believe it can even do uh, SharePoint. It also supports network load balancing and up to four gigabytes of RAM and four-way symmetric multiprocessing. The next one up is Enterprise Edition which is what I'm going to be using for all my labs just so that I don't have to ha have a whole bunch of different versions. Um, it supports the same roles as the Standard Edition it supports up to 8-way symmetric multiprocessing and 32 gigabytes of RAM. It also supports up to 8-node clustering, which is using the Windows cluster services. And it supports the Microsoft Meta Directory services. And the Microsoft Meta Directory services is where you put a file share or other network resource inside of the domain instead of attaching it to a server which makes it nice if you want to move what server something's on you can just um, move it. It also supports hot add memory which basically if you have um, a server class piece of hardware that supports hot memory adds um, then you can actually do that with this version of Windows and it also supports Windows System Resource Manager Windows System Resource Manager allows you to give certain applications priority over other applications. Um, for example, if you're using the same server to be a print server in a company where you print maybe one or two documents a day, and it's also um, an application server where everybody does all of their job tracking or something like that, then obviously the web server role is more important and you could actually use the Windows System Resource Manager to give it priority over the other roles that the server performs. The next version up is Data Center Edition which is only available to OEMs as part of a high-end server solution. This is for those nut job high-end servers. Um, 32-bit version supports a ridiculous 32-way symmetric multiprocessing and 64 gigabytes of RAM, but it gets worse. The 64-bit version supports 64-way symmetric multiprocessing and a half terabyte of RAM. That's just that's a lot of RAM. I don't know what you would need that much RAM for, but. I'm not going to say that nobody's ever going to use that much RAM because that's bit some people before. Um, and there's even a special 128-way symmetric multiprocessing version that supports two 64-way partitions. I mean, 
this is for some like major big iron. I'm not even sure what you would use this for. Maybe uh, I don't know a virtualization server of some some ridiculous magnitude or something. This is like a sun supercomputer type deal here. But um, anyway, then there's one more version that's kind of um, it's it's special, and it's uh, small business edition. And it's designed to be an out-of-the-box solution for small businesses. It does file print sharing. It does exchange mail hosting, SharePoint internet or intranet, and fax services. Um, and then the premium edition adds ISA server, SQL Server 2000, um, and R2. The R2 version of Small Business Edition has uh, SQL Server 2005 Workgroup Edition. And it supports front page for web publishing. Um, so this is more geared towards smaller offices of maybe 5, 10, maybe 15 people um, just to host their email and do some basic file and print sharing and an intranet so that you could post internal company news. Um, probably wouldn't host my website on it, but you could. If you had static IP address in your office, um, and of course it can be the firewall, which is uh, nice. Um, then, as a little side note, um, there's 64-bit versions of these different servers, and they're all based off of Service Pack One's code base. So the Service Pack numbers are going to be a little, a little weird. Um, for your 64-bit versions of the operating systems. Uh, the 64-bit versions allow for faster clock speeds and a larger memory address space um, compared to 32-bit versions. Although sometimes you'll run into hardware limitations, you have to have a 64-bit processor, motherboard, all that fun stuff, and you're going to have to dig a little bit to find drivers for all of your hardware. Unless maybe you bought a server class machine that you know for a fact ha comes with all the 64-bit drivers. Um, so sometimes it's a little bit of a bear to get that extra speed and memory out of them. But if you're doing some heavy, heavy-duty stuff, then the extra 32 bits worth of memory is usually worth it. And as a last note, the MCSE tests for knowledge of only Server 2003 Service Pack 1. Therefore, uninstall R2 on any of the machines that you're using in your lab to learn uh, Server 2003. And this is because, uh, and that's the second CD, if you have a two CD set of Server 2003. And this is because it adds some different ways of doing things. And it's gonna it's gonna lead to confusion, so you're really gonna want to try and stay away from it. And that pretty much concludes this video.